കണ്ടു കൊണ്ട് ദൈവം അമ്പലത്തെ ആടുകിൻ്റെ ആനന്ദ ദൈവം പൊറുച്ചാറു മറകളെല്ലാം പോറ്റുകിൻ്റ ദൈവം പോതാന്ത ദൈവമുയർ നാരാന്ത ദൈവം ഇരുപ്പാടു നീക്കി ഒളി ഈന്ദ്രോളും ദൈവം എണ്ണിയനാൻ എണ്ണിയവാർ യമക്കരോളും ദൈവം തിരുപ്പാടൽ പൂവന്തനയോ ശിവമാക്കും ദൈവം ശ്രീ ചവയിൽ വിളങ്ങുകിൻ്റ ദൈവമാകാദേവം അരുൾപ്പെരും ജ്യോതി അരുൾപ്പെരും ജ്യോതി തനിപ്പെരും കരുണേ അരുൾപ്പെരും ജ്യോതി എല്ലാം സേകോടും എന്നാനെ അമ്പലത്തെ എല്ലാം വല്ലാൻ തനയേ ഏത് ഇന്നു വരുമോ നാളേക്കേ വരുമോ മറ്റു വരുമോ അറിയേ ഞൻ കോവേ തോന്നുമലവെമ്മായേറ്റ് വെളിക്കൾ വെളി കടന്ന് സുമാ കിടക്കും സുഖം dreamed that we would have such a wonderful welcome to our event this afternoon we are so blessed to have Krishna Mal Jagannathan with us who we'll we just calling her Amma and uh, I'd like you to know about this book that tells the story of her work with her husband Jagannathan I regard them as two of the real authentic Gandhians of the world today in any country and we've been so inspired by talking with you this morning and i i am just searching for words to try to convey what a wonderful heartwarming experience it's been meeting you and uh, so i'm very very pleased that the meta center can now share ama with the world uh, through the medium of this conversation and this film and what we would like to do is uh, first i think i will ask uh, joanna macy to introduce herself and then ask ama a couple of questions and i will ask her a couple of questions and then we would like to open it up uh, to everyone uh, i know my question will take about 3 hours <laughs> for you to answer <laughs> but we will just uh, try to do the best we can so we're doubly honored today in having the macys here with us today ram and joanna Oh I I forgot I'm supposed to introduce myself and and spell my name. <laughs> I think I can handle that. Yeah, I'm Michael Nagler from the Meta Center. Metos with two T's. That's the only tricky part. <laughs> so now Joanna, could we hear from you and then I would like you I'd like to ask you to start the conversation. I'm Joanna Macy. You want me to spell it? No, oh, no. I think we're good. We're good to spell it. A R E S G E. Words cannot express how um, honored I feel and how grateful to be sitting here this afternoon at this time of great opening for our country. Mm -hmm. uh, something that we didn't dare hope for. We worked very hard, but we didn't mm -hmm. dare hope that the likes of Barack Obama would be elected to be our president. So it makes me 
grateful for all those who labor because his being elected is the fruit of many hands and work on, in every state, in every town, and, and uh, people behind the scenes. And, and it is this that makes me feel so grateful to behold this woman, Krishna Mal Jagannathan Amma, uh, that you are alive in the time of my life because you represent for me and for so many people uh, the qualities of uh, Atmaharana, Ahimsa, true devotion to life, and incredible perseverance and fearlessness. So I have a number of questions, and I'll just say two. <laughs> Um, one question is, is short and factual. Uh, what is in the, in the uh, campaign against industrial prawn farming that Lafti has spearheaded with you and Jagannathan, uh, which the Supreme Court in India voted in your ju judged in your favor? But the Indian government tried to cancel that with a bill, where that stands. So that's one question. And the other question relates to the uh, source in the great spirit from which you draw. And I would like to ask you about working with fear. You, the way you never gave up, the way you, even when imprisoned, even when threatened, even when assaulted, uh, that you uh, would, in one campaign after another, just sit there. You wouldn't go away. You were not discouraged, and you had much that would discourage and cause fear to rise. And when I read about that again in this exquisite book, um, I feel I want to uh, learn from you. It is a great honor. I'm very, very happy to meet all my relatives, I can say. Mm -hmm. I have few relatives connected with this body, but all over the world I have many, many, many relatives connected with this world. So some of our, our friends, like Sky, and some from England used to come and stay with me. When we are sleeping night, they just hold my hands like this and sleep with me. So we are blessed with so many relatives all over the world. She was asking me, what keeps you going on? The, the essence of Gandhiji's philosophy is a, a spiritual message. How the spirit in this body can give, bring light to the world. We are just searching for for something in the dark. But we are not searching what is inside, whether the inside is, whether there is light or darkness like that. Gandhi, we have studied about Gandhi, written so many books and things. And 
what he has in the heart he applied so he got an opportunity to express his spiritual power spiritual strength the spiritual feelings the spirit can do anything like that he started to express his feelings in south africa and when he was in south africa a great duty was waiting for him in india that is to bring freedom to the country he never dreamt he will be able to shoulder such a big responsibility fighting with the british a mighty empire empire they used to say sun never sets in our kingdom that when he started the movement the country was divided into so many factors these princes kings and land owners landlords caste so many division in the how to bring them in a very hard task he had to face so many criticism lastly he risked his life at the gun and now he became a living legend everywhere gandhi is a living legend because of his sacrifice selfless sacrifice when he went to south africa i used to say he took the second birth Mm. renounced the, the whole family waiting for him to get money and to lead the life the family he renounced like that when we have when you want to follow the principle of gandhi there should be at least a little bit of bit of renunciation fearless sacrifice we must see that hardship is a return in our faith we were we have to be ever ready to face any consequences the boldness when we have the moral courage naturally it, the boldness will blossom in our heart that was he did it and he selfless sacrifice it has got its own merit spread like fire all over india when whenever he moved his tongue the whole re started to mobilize get mobilized that you heard about our uh, uh mohan raj mohan gandhi his grandson grandson and raja ji was his grandfather very intellect very powerful man he became the governor of india also such a great man he went and joined with gandhi started to spin and what about vinoba not only vinoba he took to his two brothers along with him 
So they went and joined the Ahmedabad uh, ashram. There, the scrunching was, toilet was removed by a boy of thirteen. It was, the bucket was so full, raining, he couldn't move it. These three brothers, they are, they are supposed to call the highest caste, the uppermost caste. They, three of them went, no, hereafter you, you don't touch it. We are here to do the scavenging. Like that, Gandhi brought a magic change in India because of his spiritual power. And he, yes, a tremendous power he has got. And an opportunity was waiting for him in India. Such a big responsibility. He shouldered it very, very powerfully. He led the whole country and brought the peaceful mother here. But he went, undertook so many risks. But every time he surrendered to God, you know, what? He has understood him. I am ordinary person, but you surrendered to God. I want, O oh God, make use of me for a good purpose. He took a noble cause, organized to him. Many giants like J. Prakash Narayan, went and joined Gandhi. We know about the spiritual leader, a saintly man, went and joined. And at the age of eighteen, my husband got the inspiration when there was a call from Gandhi, leave the college and join the movement. He took all his books, kept it in a temple and joined Gandhiji. From that day till now, some fire is burning in his heart. Mm -hmm. All right, we joined Gandhiji, went to jail and all these things. But Gandhiji brought freedom to the country. It is on the city, like Delhi, Madras, Bombay, like that. It has not reached the bottom. So my husband started a second freedom fight, battle to bring peace and justice and freedom to the bottom, to the lost man. How can we bring the freedom to the lost man when, when in one village four people owning the whole resources in that village, the tank, the lands, the trees, the pathway, even the graveyard belong to certain dominating group. Amma, may I mention something here? You know, the whole world is like that village. <laughs> <laughs> there, so, are, there are 40 people who own more wealth than the bottom 40 countries on the planet. So it is there. But everybody, people like us who are interested in Gandhian way, we must have many movements, civil movements everywhere, to bring justice to the people. The people who are, we are fighting for are helpless, Ill illiterate. They are struggling for their own existence. What can we expect from them? So like that, when we are fighting for the right of the people who are living in the villages, all on a sudden one problem came into our place, that is the stream farming. Mm -hmm. It is a very destructive industry. Nobody knows about it. 
Mm-hmm. Everybody is talking about a dev- democracy and all these. People have no idea of this problem. Mm-hmm. Just they came, first they started to cut all the coastal line, mm-hmm. destroy the mangrove forest. Mangrove forest, such a thick wall to protect the country mm-hmm. from cyclone, winds and salt water. But they destroyed the whole thing. My husband started to cry. He used to take, undertake many times fasting program. In one place he took fifty-six days fasting. He became very tired and lying down the cot. And what, what about us when he was lying down like a sick person? How can we eat? We faced so many hardships. Then lastly he went to the court, got a wonderful verdict. But the government didn't take any notice of it. This thing. There are so many political parties. Nobody came to us, are you fasting, are you struggling, whether the police are arresting, nothing, nobody knows about it. Everybody in their own work of catching votes become the power, politically power people. Well, and now, luckily, the tsunami came and destroyed all the farms. Now they are going to start it. We have to organize another fight for this. And it's just to, uh, for those of us in this room to recall, it's not just in the Indian coastline in Tamil Nadu. Yeah. It's Thailand, it's the Philippines, it's Vietnam, it's Ecuador. Yeah. This is a major multinational industry. Mm-hmm. And you know, I was thinking of a comparison to ivory poaching. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering whether it would be a good idea to organize a worldwide boycott against shrimp. Yeah. First of all, I'm a vegetarian, so the fewer <laughs> shrimp we eat, the happier I am. But I bet we could bring the attention of the world. Mm-hmm. 99 out of 100 people in the world have no idea that uh-huh. when they go into a restaurant, what it's costing mm-hmm. to the environment. And mm-hmm. even if the boycott doesn't totally succeed, at least it will bring people's attention. Yeah. It's a luxury a food. Mm-hmm. Yes. So it's, it's those it's who, you know, it's at the banquets, it's at the yeah. political mm-hmm. campaign dinners, yeah. it's at the cocktail lounges. It's, yeah. And so that uh, you could sort of target mm-hmm. the um, educational effort. Yeah. You know, the, what I like, what's most impressive to me about Lafti and the way that you work, is when I look at the Gandhian movements or the nonviolent movements that have happened since Gandhi and King, they're either constructive program or they're satyagraha. But you never you never see both together. And with Lefty, you have both. You do constructive program to help the villagers to build homes, and then when you need to, you do this active resistance. So, luckily, we have two parts. All the struggle organized by my husband. Then I will be moving in the village, organizing the uh-huh. people. So we, we both together did this. <laughs> Watch out! You see, for example, whenever I go to the government, they are supporting me. Last June I went and asked them for free stamp paper, free registering the land in the name of woman free. I gave them the application Monday and Saturday they declared uh, 1,068 acres of land for registration, no fee at all, no registration, nothing. They can. Like that, whenever I go on approach, they are very favorable to my uh, request, they are helping me. So I will be them. My, uh, when they start cheap liquor, preparing the liquor in a pocket and distribute to the people, my husband organized a big struggle. Immediately he was arrested. And following him, 
the moment should be going on. So we will go and organize the people, daily offering Satyagara and going to jail. Like that, that part, we never miss condemning the government for their wrong things. And another thing is, this brown issue, they were, government is very helping us in every possible way to uh, help the village people. But they, when they started the streaming farm, we, every day we had a struggle, going to the stream farms, sitting there, fasting, getting arrested, all these things. So my husband is very particular. Not just getting some help, development to work is somebody can do it. As Gandhian, we must take the fundamental issue and fight for it. Uh, we have to suffer to bring real freedom to the people. That is what he, his aim. So all the time, only now, I am very tired of going to jail. Mm -hmm. And another point is... <laughs> uh -huh. Very true, yeah. yeah. Jagannathan is 90 years now. 95. Another point is, we both together used mm -hmm. to work as two hands. Mm -hmm. He is my right hand. Mm -hmm. Now the right hand is lying down on the bed. Mm -hmm. Naturally it affects my, mm -hmm. me very much. Sometimes I used to sit and cry. So for the last two years, I never, I didn't have any program of struggle. Mm -hmm. Just, but I, I, I am sitting near him, but I will go and distribute the land, build the houses, mm -hmm. that kind of things are going. Mm -hmm. But the struggle point, little I am hesitating. But mm -hmm. let me organize the things to move. Mm -hmm. Then I, mm -hmm. I have got a strong group, committed group with me. With them, I am surely going to start mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. this brown issue. Okay. So those were the two questions that I had, Amma. One is, are there groups of younger people now that are trained and ready to step into your place? Yes. Whenever there is a program, uh -huh. attractive program, yes. for a sacrifice, mm -hmm. for doing something heroically, mm -hmm. there are people. Huh. In our area, especially women are going, when are you going to start the struggle against the... <laughs> for example, and the village people addicted to... Uh, illicit liquor yeah. with uh, uh, used batteries and roots and sugar, they, they boil it and keep it underneath, mm -hmm. fermented, and then they take getting... Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. So it is very bad for the health of them. So the woman is, Amma, when are you going to start it? Let us go. So we'll... Every day from 8 to 10 we will go around and collect all the vessels. They are afraid. The district authority called me. Oh, what is it? How are you able to do all these things? The uh, uh, police are beaten by the people, but they are not beating you. But they have, in heart of hearts, they have their love for me because mm -hmm. I am giving them land and all these things. Mm -hmm. They are not... Mm -hmm. But I will go on bring lot of vessels I have brought from the villages. Like that, oh, one part of this kind of struggle is going. But uh, taking the issue of uh, shrimp farm, mm -hmm. at present I have dropped it. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, the tsunami has destroyed mm -hmm. the whole farms. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> Now, in one or two places, they have started it. Mm -hmm. They are hoping to start it. Mm -hmm. But uh, in some place, some um, landlords also, the uh, rich people are sending me letters. All right, we want to give the land to, 
back to you. You can come and take it. Because now it's, it's not uh -uh, very useful. Yeah. Oh, useful. So polluted. Yeah. 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 Even so, that we have to, because we have to give employment opportunity to the villagers. We have to take it and convert it into, uh, with uh, chemicals and some mm -hmm. uh, green manure we have. Mm -hmm. There is a way to cul convert those lands into cultivable yeah. land that have to be done. But now my concentration is, at least for some time, and because of the sep separation, segregation from the main village, the untouchable, the landless people are living in a place like cattle shed. That cattle shed, even that cattle shed was heavily damaged by the cyclone, tsunami. tsunami. And lot of attention to the fishermen community. Mm -hmm. These people are still neglected. I have to take up that problem. Mm -hmm. This issue is a burning problem in my heart. Mm -hmm. All the time my mind is going, well, when I am going to give them good house. Mm -hmm. And they are also begin to ask me, Amma, before you going away from this world, before you going, not they, they won't say you are going from this world, before you going, Please build a house for us. Mm -hmm. Then I used to teach them, the ticket has not come. Mm -hmm. I am waiting for the ticket. Before I am going, surely I will give a nice house. Mm -hmm. So when we are having this kind of feeling, thought and plan, mm -hmm. suddenly I got an opportunity of this Opus Praise. And Opus Praise and this Laulilud Award, she has got that part recommending my name to these people. <laughs> and David and she, no. You know, we have a project here yes. which is taking the poorest people in the cities, yes. uh, mostly African American people, ah, yes. if you don't do something for them, they end up in prison. Mm -hmm. And so our friend Van Jones mm -hmm. is organizing what he calls green collar jobs. In other mm -hmm. words, taking these young people and training them how to do solar panels mm -hmm. and jobs. So he says, this is the people who most need work and this is the work that most needs doing. Mm -hmm. And putting them together, he mm -hmm. has a very powerful mm -hmm. formula and he's been very successful. It sounds to me like what you wanted to do mm. with these people in the cattle sheds is very similar. Mm. If you could give them work mm. restoring the land, mm. that's the work that most needs to be done and that's the people who most need to do it. Mm. But that would be a good combination. And the, the judgment of the Supreme Court yeah. mm -hmm. was originally that the uh, prawn industry yeah. <coughs> companies would pay damages. Yeah. Mm because they've wrecked it, they've wrecked yep. the fishing. Yep. The fish are gone. Yep. You need other kinds of boats to get out there so that if they paid the damages, that would pay for these jobs. Yeah, but that hasn't yeah. happened yet, has it? <laughs> and in Washington, D.C., I went to the World Bank, I explained oh. to them. <laughs> <laughs> they must have been scared. <laughs> Did you give them the word? <laughs> and now we have stopped it. We know it is creating trouble. So we have stopped it. <laughs> then I gave my application for housing. All right, you write it uh, and send a proper application. We are ready to build the houses in 500 villages. Oh. Oh, that okay. much they have told me. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> let me see what is going on. Yeah. I have went okay. to that World Bank also. <laughs> and it is very difficult to get into the World Bank. So many checks. <laughs> they and must be very afraid they, of you. <laughs> they take our photo and pin it here, then they are. <laughs> you know, usually when uh, we found this here also with the civil rights movement, mm. the court can make a right decision mm. 
and even the Congress can make the right decision. But then you need to go and make it real. And that means struggle, and that means being in the street. So I wanted to ask you, in connection with the Prawn struggles in particular, do you go beyond protest? Do you actually try to block entry of the construction crews or things like that? Just we'll go and occupy the land. I see. We won't allow you to come and do it. I see. And before starting it, the police in the night will come and make a raid uh -huh. and take all of us. Mm. Mm. Then would there be others to replace mm -hmm. you and it would go on like that? And the, what is it they are used to? They are all have a lot of muscle men. <laughs> yeah, oh, thugs. Oh, you see it. And throwing the stones. Uh, one day, early morning, five o'clock, we were traveling in the jeep. And a long five kilometers, the people are standing like that. And why these people are standing? Early in the morning, they started to throw. My husband was sitting in the front. But luckily he escaped. That the stone came to me hmm. the night. Hmm. And always they try to do all kinds of criminal things. Is but it possible to talk to these people to explain that what you're doing is going to help them? But they are doing it for some money yeah. only. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what can they do? Yeah. You know, I was, the reason I mentioned that, I was thinking of Danilo Dolce, uh, who yes, has uh, yes. the Sicilian Gandhi. Ah, uh, yes. Because he, he was I visited his... Oh, you did? No. Oh, in those days, I went to Sicily and visited him. Oh, my gosh. Yes. <laughs> I already respected you. Uh, yes. <laughs> I but visited him. He had the same situation of being against the government and against the mafia. Mafia. And when he had a great success with a dam, building a dam, the Mafia came and said, well, now, Danilo, you have all the water. Mm. And he said, no, now we have the water. It's for all of us. Mm. And he was able to explain to them that what he was doing was helpful <coughs> for everyone mm. in the district. So like that. I, I have a slightly related question. Oh, that's that's all right. That we're <coughs> um, you moved around all the time. And then you started Gandhi Gram, and then mm -hmm. and um, then uh, Guttur. So the ashram, as a base community, uh, has been, it seems, from uh, the Gandhian perspective, and then in your own lived life, very in, important. In Gandhi Gram, first, my husband. <laughs> Fortunately, we had a great man, Reverend Kaitan, mm -hmm. from Minnesota, missionary. Yeah. missionary. Mm -hmm. He is our Godfather, always lived with us. Whenever we start a great struggle, he will come and lead us. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so, with him, Gandhi Gram people wanted to have a <coughs> place, a land to start a Gandhi Gram. Mm -hmm. These two people, my husband and uh, Kaya, Reverend Kaitan, went round, meet the village people, got land. And when they finished all the process of taking the land, nearly 200 acres of land they got. And uh, slowly the Gandhi Gram people started to enter into politics. So these people left Gandhi Gram. So now we didn't have much good relationship with them. Let them they mm -hmm. are having uh, uh, this uh, village work and educational starting uh, university <coughs> and all this. But we have started that Vinoba Ashram in our, we are serving the village people here. We always follow the path of Gandhiji perfectly. But I am very sorry to tell you, after my husband's ill health, 
We are not doing that is spinning. Mm-hmm. That we have left it. And very difficult to get the cotton Cut. slavers to the spin. Slavers. Mm-hmm. A small piece of slavers to mm-hmm. spin. That we have left. In other part, we are having regular prayer and going to the, following the poor, non-vegetarian food and all these things are there in the Well, as we face a disintegrating economy here mm-hmm. and a financial recession mm-hmm. and more and more foreclosures of homes, people mm-hmm. losing their homes, there's a, an accelerating interest in people living together, making co-housing, mm-hmm. eco-villages, uh, a sort of Western-style ashram, mm-hmm. and uh, that I wonder, and this is a question that I'd love to hear you say something about too, uh. Uh, Michael, is that is, do you see in this financial crisis, mm-hmm. economic crisis, yeah. an opportunity to mm-hmm. create a base communities? Yeah. The short answer is yes. Uh, the long answer is an article that uh, I've written called From Meltdown to Miracle. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. It, it's a lot like the situation in World War II when Germany and Japan recovered economically much more quickly than the victorious nations because their infrastructure was wiped out <laughs> so they could start all over again with new equipment. And what we need to do is exactly the same, only not start with new equipment. But as you've been saying, Joanna, with new culture and new institutions. Because now more than ever before, we have an opportunity to say, this kind of economy, which multiplies wants, as Gandhiji used to call it, is satanic. It it cannot work. So now, since you see that it can't work, wouldn't this be a good time to try a simple economy based on real human needs and build communities around that? You know, move from consumerism to community. And Martin Luther King said, we must rapidly begin the shift from a thing-oriented society to a person-oriented society. So we can solve both those problems at once, the alienation and the economic instability, by starting simple communities. And I was noticing that we took a bushel of apples down the road Mm -hmm and traded it for some vegetables. And on that very day, the economy lost almost a trillion dollars of value, but it didn't affect our apples. (laughs) The vegetables were the same. So we had a wonderful discussion this morning at our Hope Tank about what all opportunities have been opened up now by successes and by failures. But one thing that I feel very strongly, and I'm sure you'd agree, Uh, Joanna, is that we need to learn from each other. Uh, Yes. (laughs) Learning is the one part. Um, How to implement? Yes, yes. That is the question. Yes. So all over the world we must have Mm -hmm. civilian movements everywhere Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (coughs) for something or other. We are all just, we are reading about Gandhi and everything, Mm -hmm. sitting at home. Yeah. and dreaming about it. <laughs> How can we expect some change in the society? Yeah. Wherever so, we go, we must take it. Well, one thing is we need to learn from Lafti is that combination of constructive program ah, yes. and satyagraha. Ah, that is <laughs> mostly because of my husband's boldness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All the time <laughs> undertaking fasting and going to prison. <laughs> Sometimes I get angry with him. Without <laughs> <laughs> Without uh, telling anything, he will go and undertake the fast. And fifty-six days he undertook the fast in a, uh, on the coastal area in a fisherman community. There is no place even to sit and the drainage is going down. He went and sat there mm-hmm. and we gave him a, one cart. He was mm-hmm. lying there. My daughter is a doctor. She came and scolded me. How can we allow Appa to sit on that? Uh, <laughs> well, not only don't that. Don't you have the courage to fight with him? <laughs> <laughs> Does everyone in the room know what Lefty is? Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Yes. Well, I know, I, I don't think you do, and it's, it's, I, 
that stands for the uh, land for tillers freedom yeah so it's agricultural workers organized to own land yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. you see mm -hmm. just I wanted to uh, say some our friend Sky has mm -hmm. come from 83 onwards he had connection with it uh -huh. she today she told a story to the children it was very appealing so I want her to tell something about right. her experience mm -hmm. of our work Sky, Sky you if, you, if you, okay. How she came to meet and um, only today she was telling the story. You can sit right here, Sky. Is that okay, Lorenzo? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Introduce yourself a little bit. Uh, Sky Ferris from Ontario, Canada. And I have the uh, pleasure and uh, honor to travel with Krishna Ma in her time in the United States this year. So there is an old story, and I mean it's a true story of my life, and it happened at the very beginning of my time of meeting with Krishna Ma. So this morning I tried to tell a brief version of it. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Um, so in 1983 was the first time that I actually came to India, to South India, and I met with Krishnamal and was welcomed actually and came to their home. And what I told her when I came is that I had to come because I had heard that she and other Gandhians in South India were working for radical land reform without violence. Mm -hmm. So that's the key piece. Mm -hmm. I think at that time, probably in my life, I was hearing much more about uh, any question of land involved violence, ultimately. So I told her, it isn't that I didn't believe, I just had to come and see. So in their typical manner, they just include you, they just open their arms and you're included. And I think it was, it was my good fortune that within a couple of days, I, as I remember, uh, there was a call to go to visit a particular landlord in a nearby village. And actually that landlord had been visited, I believe, many times by Krishnamal and Jagannathan. And this was again another opportunity. And so they asked me if I would like to come along. And so, of course. <laughs> but I, of course I didn't speak Tamil. And yet I knew that, you know how it is, when you don't speak a language, you still have lots of opportunity to see how the body language is, the tone, what are people doing, so you, you have that part. So I went along with them, we went to the, um, the house of this landlord, and he happened to be, I think he had about 100 acres that he was um, receiving the food from. And that is actually quite a lot more land than it is even legal for him to have. So I went inside with them, but I stood back towards the wall because I wanted to see as best I could what would go, go on. So what I remember is that Krishnamal and Jagannathan were just so calm, so calm, so relaxed really, and so present as they walked towards this man. And as I remember, they were about, they walked until they were about this far from him. So on this side, you have the two of them just really so simply and gently looking at this uh, man, the landlord, on this side. But that landlord, his face is just tormented. He is just in terrible shape. And I think it was his inner, what I'm feeling is it was his inner emotional war was going on. Oh, I, honestly, his face just completely transformed. He, he just looked terrible. And he just... So in that period of time, that's what I saw. And so Krishnamal and Jagannathan continued in a respectful and gentle, quiet way, just telling him probably again for the maybe the 100th time that he had this uh, number of acres of land in this village but there were people outside the gate who didn't have any land at all, who worked for him and had really no chance of having a, a stable life at all. 
So in a way, I feel I can say the poor man. He was rich in one way, but he was very poor. The poor man, he was just taken by this feeling of, I heard later that he had worked for years to get this 100 acres. Mm -hmm. And, and he felt that he had finally reached a point of, you know, comfort and security himself. But here, these two people were so calmly and gently just reminding him of the broader picture in his own village. And, and he, I think, good for him, he was taking it in. He, he was, uh, but oh, it was painful. Mm -hmm. So that's how things were left. That's how close they were, and that's what happened. And then at the when Krishnamala and Jagannathan felt that enough time had transpired, they just bid him kind of good evening, came and kind of picked me up, and mm -hmm. out we walked out of the compound. There's a nice wall around it with a gate. So we walked out, we walked out and down the road and back to the, the place where we were staying. So the next point time that this came up for me was about a month, I think it was about a month later. I was still hanging around, learning things mm -hmm. and enjoying the experience. And there came another call. And this time it was the landlord uh, asking to see Krishnamal and Jagannathan again. So, you know, what would happen? And I don't know that anybody knew exactly what was going to happen. But anyway, the three of us came, I remember it clearly. We came walking down that, that road, dusty road. We just turned to the doorway to the compound or something like maybe this wide. We just turned like that and I could see the landlord and his wife beside him. And he was radiant. He was, ra he was shining like the sun. And his wife was beside him and they, it just looked like it was a very happy situation. And we got to hear that the storm had passed, right? Mm -hmm. The healing had come for him mm -hmm. and that he was ready to offer to Krishnamal and Jagannathan and the whole Lafti community to offer some acres at what they call a concessional rate. So it means it's not the same rate as the, what you could call the market price, but it is it is a lower rate and also they are precious acres. Mm -hmm. And he is willing that that become part of the Lafty scheme mm -hmm. for others. Mm -hmm. And not only that, they threw in a building. There's a little building in the village and the, I remember that it should become a, a peace center, imagine. Mm -hmm. Going the second mile, eh? <laughs> so honestly, I will never forget that man's face. So, but they are very calm, right? Well, I'm also trying to be calm. <laughs> well, you're a Canadian. It's easy for you. <laughs> <laughs> so they are just very relaxed about it all and appreciative and accepting this great joy. And then we just walk out and down the lane again. And uh, to me, it's a story that helps me understand maybe a little bit about what is going on when mm -hmm. a landlord meets uh, people from the Sarvodhya movement. Mm -hmm. What's going on? There's really just a telling of the story of the, the reality, the bigger picture. You know, I, I think, Sky, behind what the transformation that takes place <coughs> in the landlord was a transformation that had taken place a long time ago in Krishnamal mm -hmm. and Jagannatha. Mm -hmm. If they go, what you called earlier, renunciation, mm -hmm. they go through this renunciation. If you come to someone and say, renounce, mm -hmm. it has no effect. Mm -hmm. But if you renounce yourself, and then you stand there quietly and say, look what I have done, it draws other human beings mm -hmm. into that circle. And that's how nonviolence spreads. Yes, I mean, there are probably many ways to tell this story. I feel to it, they were very present even in just, mm -hmm. they were just really telling him of the bigger yeah. picture. Mm -hmm. And you, you mentioned another detail that shouldn't slip by us. It was very important. The fact that you were able to approach him with respect. Mm -hmm. That is mm -hmm. critical. This is something that Gandhiji was an absolute genius. That no matter who you were, no matter what you had done, he had respect for what lived in you. You know, whatever you call that. And when you do that, I think more than half of the battle is won. And they didn't give up on him. Well, that's the other, the other important point, the you determination. Know, I, would have, I would have been tempted to just turn away muttering and so yeah. on. Yeah. But they, to hold the thought 
yeah. that he can change. Yeah. The situation can change yeah. and keep. So the persistence in mm -hmm. your own faith that that soul has to be in that person and the persistence in the face of your own suffering. Mm -hmm. You were saying earlier this morning about 40 years of transformation that it took to mm -hmm. bring peace to, to mm -hmm. one area. Mm -hmm. Could you say a little more about that and then we'll see if other people have any. You questions. see, I am not a good writer or <laughs> I am not a Well, Joanna will speaker. be the writer for us. <laughs> but last June, it was a miraculous mm. action happened in our office. The, you see, I used to fail. There was a divine call for me to go on work in one particular area. In 1968, 44, landless woman burned just putting petrol on them the, when they were in a hut, taking refuge in a small hut, they were mercilessly killed. Big tragedy. And all the politicians went there. We also went there. And I took a strong decision. Anyhow, I must give land to all the women. That is my decision. And then at those days I used to feel, suppose anybody is willing to give land to all the landless poor, I am ready to risk my life if they want me on one condition. You must go to the kiln, the brick kiln, and burn you. They are ready to sacrifice so much like that. Then we will give land to all the people. I thought it. I am always prepared to go to take such kind of risk, losing my life, giving my life for the sake of others. When I have such a feeling in my heart, I thought I must do this. Anyhow, I find the way to give land to all of them. But such a great opposition from all sides. If I have any meeting, the landless people won't come because they are much very much afraid of their own political um, violent people, strong communists. They wanted to bring revolution, Chinese revolution, killing the landlords, taking the land, distributed. That is the. They thought, how the Gandhian people want? They are going to disturb our area. The people are not going to vote for us. We will lose our political party. That kind of. They are always searching for me to drive away. You know. And the landlord's mind is in some other way. How can an untouchable become equal to us? They are not human beings. They are a creature. They used to tell me, you want to give land to the wretched snakes? They are so very, very bad people. They are like snakes. For them you want to give. Dirty people, untouchables. They are bound up to us. They have taken money. This person has taken 150 rupees from me, and that person has taken so much money. They are bounded to us. And how, how are you going to bring equality? You go away like that. But in spite of all this opposition, we established the five Gandhi Peace Centers. Mm -hmm. We couldn't, we were not allowed to enter into any village. Just secretly we'll go and collect the children and start the school. When the parents are in the paddy fields, we collect and bring them to certain trees. Under the tree we will ask them to sit and give them a little bit something to eat and give them 
some thing to the right and come away. So it, an, another, how I am able to organize in there. All the women used to go early in the morning, five o'clock, to clean the landlord's cattle shed. What is the payment? The pay is only five rupees per month. Mm-hmm. Then I went and I am ready to give you thirty rupees. You don't go. You don't go. Like that I went round and collected all the cattle shed cleaners and they are they are very happy. <laughs> oh, five rupees in the thirty. Then some news is spread. We are there to help the you know. Then I went round and collected all the women, organized a, a struggle to release the temple land. Mm-hmm. I wanted to see whether they are cooperating. And I told them, when the landlord started to plow the uh, land, the temple land is for the poor. We must go and occupy the land. And when they start plowing, we must untie the plowshare and took plowshare on our shoulder, march to the police station straight. <laughs> like that, I am going to do it. When I went to that place, when forty-four women burnt alive, I just went and shed tears. I didn't took any money with me, just I went. And I have formed a strong decision with sincere efforts, with the committed workers, I was able to distribute thirteen thousand acres in that uh, area. Now, <coughs> now the landlords <coughs> are willing to come unto me. Where is Amma? When she will come? Like that they started, <laughs> that I was able to bring the harmony between the mm. conflict groups. Mm. So let us have the hopes, positive hopes, mm. optimistic hopes. And let us, I feel getting land distributed, it is a desperate attempt, but God's grace we have succeeded. Mm. Let us hope for the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mama, that's mm-hmm. just wonderful. Mm-hmm. Can you maybe tell us one thing that you've learned in all these years of work and struggle, and then we'll see if anybody else has any questions for you, and then we'll let you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so is there one thing that you'd like to share with us that you've got from all this experience of struggle? That one thing is, Physical tiredness, physical thing is there, but the spiritual, the spirit inside, whenever we start in noble, work for a noble cause, that power is great and great and great, it is growing and growing, the mental power, the spiritual power, it is always very strong to face any hardship. That is my message, that is my experience. Many times I heard the people started to attempt for my life, just put the petrol and burn. But what I did it, just I didn't want to just run away from them sat down with a cross, let's start to pray. Mm-hmm. All right, anyhow I am going to meet the end, but let me be with my friend God. Mm-hmm. Like that I was sitting, they tried their best, shouting, but they didn't... I have the courage to face them, but they didn't have the courage to mm-hmm. put petrol on me and fire. Mm-hmm. They were just shouting, abusing, telling all these filthy things, but they couldn't attempt to pour the petrol. 
like that. Three or four times I had that experience mm. also wow. with that uh, muscle man. Early morning, five o'clock, walking alone in one place, they Surround. gathered, uh, surrounded me with a can in the pet- petrol can and the sticks, match was in everything that I did. But what happened? The man with the petrol tin had a um, car accident and died hmm. later. Hmm. So it seems that it's a great spiritual strength oh, that yes. you got, mm-hmm. and that's mainly through renunciation and yes. devotion to a higher cause. Yes. Do you also have a spiritual practice? Oh, yes, 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 yes. What do you do? That, is, that thing I got it from my mother. Ah. Is and it a mantra? Or? That early morning, mm-hmm. she had many difficulties faced when at the age of 32 becoming a widow. Mm-hmm to manage a big family of twelve children, six children died mm-hmm. one by one and six children remained, to bring them up, how, how hard it was, mm-hmm. early morning, and I don't know why she is uh, doing it. And she used to keep a mirror under her bed, and first what she would do, taking the mirror, looking at uh, the mirror, her, her own face, and go out facing the east and taking the name of God for some time and do the prayer. And she used to say, there is that morning star, early morning star, four o'clock, it is shining like a bright light in the sky when it was very calm and quiet. The whole nature seems to be conversing with God. And she started to say the name, take the names of God, repeating, repeating for some time. And then she rushed to inside the house and start working. <laughs> so like that, all along, even here, four o'clock, I don't know how I got that uh, habit here. Four o'clock I happened to be awakened. And in um, Washington, 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 D.C. The sky was very clear, no cold like that. Every morning, four o'clock, I used to get up and see the star, the morning star. Here it is, so much mist, couldn't see. But my <laughs> mother <laughs> San used <Francisco>. to <laughs> do that. Mm. First she will do the prayer and then she will start out. Like that. I have got that habit of, and then seeing the star, the program will be coming in my mind, one by one, one by one. Mm -hmm. That is the time, Mm -hmm. a divine time. Mm -hmm. Brahma Mahurta. Brahma Mahurta. (laughs) Uh, 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 Brahma Mahurta is uh, early morning, two to four is Brahma Mahurta. Mm -hmm. And then, this is just be with God. Mm. I am with you, you are with me. I am not uh, alone. You are with me, you are my partner. Then only we will have that uh, courage to face any difficulties. Well, certainly I'm why, why to take it is a difficulty. Yes. It is a process in the life. <laughs> I want to feed 500 people. I have to cook, take all the uh, difficulties with me. Without uh, difficulties, without hard working, how can I prepare food for 500 people? Like that, I want to do something, noble thing in the world. For that I have to go through all this process. Don't think it is any difficulty like that. It is just a process to go through it to achieve a good thing. Well, this spirit of yours is going to work and work and work. I think (laughs) now we've only begun to see (laughs) the results. Does anyone else want to? uh, Fran? 
I'm Joanna's husband, Fran. I'm This is the drug of nothing. <laughs> when Joanna and I lived in uh, New Delhi for two years in the 1960s, it was the time of the so-called Green Revolution mm. that the four international banks and the foreign aid agencies and the foundations, especially Rockefeller, uh, were promoting so strongly and the Indian government was very interested. We saw in the Punjab how the land became owned in larger and larger parcels yes, by richer yes, and richer yes, yes. people who, who uh, uh, had to buy the seeds every year, they had to buy fertilizer, they had to buy pumps because it required so much water. And then as they got big, they, of course, had to buy tractors. Yes. And this was a whole different uh, agricultural economy. In Tom, my question is, in Tamil Nadu, uh, has modern technology made it harder for distributing land to uh, individual farmers' families? And yes. do you promote traditional ways as Mahatma Gandhi did? You see, that green revolution, it is just like our shrimp farm. <laughs> <laughs> it is utter failure. Utter failure. Mm -hmm. Utter failure. And spoiled the mother earth, putting so much chemical substance. Mm -hmm. The person who promoted that green revolution, our Swaminathan, mm -hmm. Yamma Swaminathan. He got many awards from all over the world for his scientific research on uh, chemical, a play of chemical manure and all Now, people, now he is promoting this farmyard manure. Please oh. don't use oh. chemical. Mm -hmm. Now he has come out to say. Good for him. Mm -hmm. oh. I hope people are listening to him. Oh. Is that mind changing as mine? Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then, he it, <laughs> now, the people in our area, they are hungry for oh, the, to have the right over the land, mm -hmm. to own something. Mm -hmm. For generation, to, they have never dreamt they are going to have some land, mm -hmm. because it dominating big powerful landlord is in charge of so many acres. When are you going to get it? That is, they have never dreamt, but they wanted to have land, they are getting land. If you ask them, you put organic manure, just they go and get this chemical manure and put it, they wanted to have quick result. Yeah, they did, yeah, lack of patience. Yes, but, but I have to do it. Do so have you been in some places I myself go on prepare organic manure and give ah, them. Ah. But for all the people mm. I have to do it. Mm. But that green revolution has spoiled our land. It has spoiled your land. Killed the mother earth. Mm. Amma, do you find <coughs> that the young people today are interested in exploring new things? And <coughs> That's all the that way. They, they have the same kind of nobility of no, spirit that you yes. because that's but they are getting all the knowledge and everything. They are very curious to come to uh -huh. America. They visit you oh to come to America. America. That is the dream now. Well maybe <laughs> they'll they'll learn Gandhian methods here. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone else have a question? Thank you, friend. Yes. I, I do. Um, I Do you want to come punch her and sit here? Um, <coughs> um, there are many of, of your uh, movements. I One I'm particularly interested in, that you went to a village where you didn't even talk the, the language that they did there, and yet you find that solidarity at the end. So I'm wondering, how did you organize with these people? Yeah. There were no bounds there, and then suddenly you, you made this great movement there. What I learned it, 
language is not a barrier. Mm. That is since a feeling in your heart. Mm. It will take its roots in the minds of the people. Mm. When I went to Bihar, I uh, faced a very big problem. One man, one priest, sitting in st- uh, three-storied mm. building with a golden chapel, only thirty thousand acres of land in Buddha Gaya. Oh, Buddha, yes. Buddha Gaya. Yeah. Then I thought, I must stay here to do something. Mm. Then I went and told my husband, this is what happening. Uh, wherever you go, this is the problem. And we are doing work there, you wanted to stay here. But in my heart, in the underground <laughs> plan is, I must stay there. Mm. I stayed there. They were talking even not even Hindi, mm-hmm. Mahadi. Mm-hmm. They are speaking. Mm-hmm. But I were able to organize them in such a way mm-hmm. to fight with that mighty person. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden this uh, emergency came mm-hmm. arresting mm-hmm. Are arresting, putting my husband in the jail for eighteen months. This All are that. arrested. Mm-hmm. All the people are arrested. But uh, I am very careful to escape from the hands of the police. Came down to Tamil Nadu. Mm-hmm. But I have got a very good friend, the district collector, and the Patna chief secretary of the government, and another collector. Three of them assured me we will take care of it. Mm-hmm. We don't worry about it. They were writing, writing to the government uh, how that person is owning the land illegally. Mm-hmm. Then, lastly, we got the land distributed 24,000. Mm-hmm. Then only the government, uh, st- central government mm-hmm. called me mm-hmm. to offer me this Bhatmasri. Right? Uh, this is uh, a great award in India. Padmasri is one of the best then my husband got very angry. <laughs> How can you go to receive? And later he was given that but he, well, it was announced, it came in the paper, he didn't take food, anything. Because I must answer that central government. It is the practice of the British people. When the people are starving for food, why still they are having this kind of giving awards and everything? Like that he refused. After writing a strong letter condemning their policy, he started to eat. <laughs> it's, the language, it's the language of love that yes. matters. And then, yes. Thank you. You know, what I'm hearing often from what you say, Aman, what I'm reading, is that you're not attached to the method. Sometimes we find people, they want to go to jail for the sake of going to jail, or they want to fast for the sake of fasting. But I hear from you that there's a sense that now one way is appropriate, now another way is appropriate. It's not the method, it's how you reach people, whatever is required to reach people. Did you find over many years that you learned which methods to use? We must go to the bottom. Uh Identify yourself with them. Ah. Come to their level. Uh-huh. Sleep with them, eat with them, mm. and then take up their issue. Uh-huh. Then only they will follow you. Mm. Not easily. They, we can't miss them very easily. Mm-hmm. We have to go down. So I am going. I used to go and sleep with them. Mm-hmm. Only very little place, but they wanted to give me best place to sleep nothing to spread. They will collect all the old clothes, make it as a bundle. They used to give it. Hey, let us give some pillow for Amma. <laughs> Dirty, it is smelling. But <laughs> laying my head on that, all the sufferings used oh. to come to my mind. Oh, oh. what an image. This woman. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's like a that. wonderful image. When when they go and live with them, take their mm-hmm. own food and sleep with mm-hmm. them, naturally they have got an attachment to these. Yes. Yeah. 
Well, it, it, yes. I have a question, and I wanted to ask it to both of you. Okay. It, it seems that in the United States, our big problem is getting people to be able to work together. We are very separate and very alienated from each other, and we spend all our day watching television instead no, of not talking. This point. <laughs> so, to the to the two of you, and maybe also to you, Joanna, how what do you do? to help people to get together? What do you do to help people to cooperate with each other? See, everywhere the same situation. But what I am doing it, whenever we want to gather, I used to tell them, my dear sisters, you are not an empty box, there is a lie. To represent the lie, bring one lamb and keep it let us join together and pray and look to, to the light. So like that, now we are all for physical development and material development. When we touch their heart for spiritual development, surely everybody will come together. That is my experience, that the spirit of division separation and self-development, individual development is taking place everywhere, not only <coughs> America, everywhere, even in the family. Even in the family there is a division. Rich and poor is the division in the family. But how, when we have a common approach, common cause, Everybody is coming together. Only through our spiritual life we can bring them together. That is my experience. That's what I am doing it now. Whenever we have any meeting in the village, we ask them to bring one lamb. It is a beautiful sight to see, keeping the lamb and sitting together and start to say, lead kindly light. It has its own experience. I think this experience. is the great challenge at this moment mm -hmm. because we work together fantastically mm -hmm. of, to elect Obama. Mm -hmm. ah, there yeah. were people, and now mm -hmm. uh, is the time when we have to not stop. Yeah, definitely. And that he is actually he first president to come out of community organizing. I believe mm -hmm. certainly in quite a while and that his program looks like it's going to give tremendous government stimulus to yeah. community organizations, yeah. and he's going to uh, develop that. So uh, study circles, study action circles, mm -hmm. community self-reliance, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the localization movement, yeah. it seems to me there are a lot of Instead of globalization, local yeah. Men's retreats. So I, yeah. So, <laughs> a, hold on for just a minute. I, I think, Joanna, what we're challenged to do is to come up with concrete projects for those communities of people to do. Yeah. I think that's what holds us together when we're doing yeah. something that we believe in. Yeah. And so I'm very um, thrilled with mm -hmm. the emphasis that you are bringing, Michael, mm -hmm. to um, <laughs> Putting our, directing our attention again to that important way of Gandhi's of the mm -hmm. constructive yes. program, yes. and yes. that, and you're, I love the way you point out that Lofty combined yeah. that yeah. with Satyagraha in a very yeah. unusual way that yes. uh, mm -hmm. that you yeah. don't see you just, elsewhere, yeah. mm -hmm. and that that's a great teaching for us yeah. at this time. That's what I'm taking away from it, because you have something like the landless workers movement in Brazil which is, a, you must know about Oh, it. yes, I know about it. This wonderful constructive program. But whenever they're attacked, they have no idea what to do. They throw sticks at the police. They're not like you. They don't know how to sit down. And then you have things like the overthrow of Mr. Milosevic in Serbia, which was a fabulous uh, resistance movement. But the minute that he was out of office, they didn't know what to do. There was no constructive program. It stayed under. fragmented. It mm -hmm. stayed fragmented. So yeah. I see an incredible potential here mm -hmm. that we could make 
our movement aware mm. that it has both a constructive and both a and a resistant element, yeah. and when to do which, I think it could be all the power that we need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here we are in the United States of America in this room. Uh -huh. I counted 18 people. Okay. With that camera. Okay. Uh, and, and you're a teacher. You're in a class with many. Well, Not or, anymore. Okay, <laughs> with, with, in, a, in a group. What I want to know is what do you do in a class, in a given situation, like here where people are sitting together in the room, so that people will feel united, so that people will feel close to each other, cooperative with each other. What specific process do you go through? I mean, the wonderful idea of holding a lantern or a, a together or a candle together or having a common project. <coughs> but we need to study this. We need to learn how to bring people together. And I, I leave myself open to anybody that has ideas to how to do this. Yes. I want to give a, a very little example, very little compared to your tell, work. Tell us your name. <laughs> before you. Hello, I'm Susan Schaller and I was asked to teach sign language at a, um, a program for disadvantaged youth in, in inner city Oakland. And it was uncomfortable the first couple days, especially because I was not only the only white person, but I was the teacher. And I didn't like the, you know, the, the way it was set up, or I was stereotyped because I was in a position of power. And uh, these were 14, 15, 16, 17 year olds. And, uh, there were many people who, um, well, in that teenage way, a lot of posturing, a lot of resistance. Attitudes. Uh, attitudes, yes. Definitely posturing and a lot of uh, projection um, of stereotypes of who I was, and I was um, not, not liked by definitely some of the people. And at one point, I stopped teaching sign language, and I, I used a, a situation, I don't remember what came up, and I talked about how I was uh, suicidally depressed when I was a teenager and that I contemplated jumping and that I didn't know how to how to deal with all these emotions and I didn't know how to deal with my life and I didn't know how to and, and I almost jumped and I was so glad that I didn't and that I met people who, whom I never thought of meeting ever, deaf people who signed and I, I was so shocked at this visual communication and this visual world and it was a gift, and it drew me out of myself, and I learned a, a brand new world, and, and I learned that I was related to deaf people, that they taught me how to use my eyes, mm -hmm. and I shared this story with them, and I said, you don't know what's going to happen when you're 15 and 16 years old, but we are all connected, and I never knew I was connected to deaf people, and yet mm -hmm. they taught me how to see, and they introduced me mm -hmm. to my face. And after I shared that, and so answer to your, your question, that was my example, but what I've discovered recently in life is the more authentic I am, the more I, I express equality and connection, and that I can learn from you, and uh, that the more I do that, the more people wake up. I mean, it is, it is awareness that we're connected, and, and I do believe, and I say this quite openly to not just young people, but people I meet, I gave up my car so I meet people more on the street, and that's part of community. And I say, we've got to take things out of our ears, we've got to take computers away from our faces so that we can see eye to eye. And I, I think that in the United States, one of the biggest things we can do is just connect mm -hmm. with people mm -hmm. and just look people in the eyes and mm -hmm. say, hello, how are you, and mean it, mm -hmm. and not just rush off to our car. Mm -hmm. So that's very little, but I'm it trying. doesn't matter how small or how big it is, Susan. <laughs> yeah, in this program that we have from consumerism to community, we're developing a little list of things that people can do. And one of the most remarkably effective and simple, this is like Cuddy, because everybody can do it every day. You just give people your one-pointed attention when they're talking to you. They did a study a while back with little infants. They put a recorder on their diapers <laughs> And they were able to tell that they got 90 seconds of attention from their father in the course of the day. Oh, no. 90 seconds, a minute and a half. 
So we can triple and expand just to give people, even if they're saying something you don't like, you discover that there's a person in there that's not just what they're saying. And as the, as the Buddha say, said, he said, looking nervously at Joanna to make sure he gets it right, <laughs> if, if, you want to, if you're trying to understand what somebody else wants, think of what you want. If you want to know what makes another person happy, and this is what I do when I go into a group, mm -hmm. I ask myself, you know, what am I feeling? What do I want to get out of this? And at bottom, as you were saying, Amma, it's exactly the same for all of us. Yeah. We all want respect. We all want a chance to be heard. Mm -hmm. We all want um, you know, recognition as, as basically valuable people. And what you said about spiritual practice. I love the word practice because mm -hmm. we have to practice every single day. Every single day we have to practice. And when I first began, um, I, I didn't know how to practice being present, being present tense. And, and, and I um, kept reminding myself every day. And <laughs> I wanted to share this story. I walked into a grocery store it was rather early in the morning. And I... Um, paid for something, and I said to the, the cashier, a young man, I said, I said, good morning, how are you? And I stopped, and I looked at him in the eye, and, and I'm not joking, this is what he did. He went, oh, <laughs> oh much better, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I was sad, be yeah. I mean, because I realized nobody had ever looked him in the yeah. eye. He was treated as a robot. Yeah. And so, and that, that really encouraged me. So much better. I, <laughs> Yes. Much better now. <laughs> well, thank you, Susan. You know, we're almost out of time, Emma, and I'm 10 years younger than you, and I can't go on like this all day. I don't know how you do it. So we're so grateful and so happy that we were able to talk with you today and that I, for one, was able to meet you. I know that you know Joanna before. If there's anything, last thing that you'd like to ask us, um, how can we help you, mm -hmm. how can you, uh, what would you like to share with us, any last thing that you'd like to leave us with? You see, I don't know why I am traveling. Hmm. First, uh, when I got the two opus praise announcement, I thought, oh God, give strength to my husband. At least in ten days, let me go to America and come back. How these friends have <laughs> organized this from Boston to East Coast and West Coast. Everywhere I am meeting, mm. Amma, I have met you somewhere. I have <laughs> met you somewhere. Everywhere. I, it is a miracle. It really is. Mm. Even in this American University, one man has come and touched my feet, Amma, mm. I have seen you. Mm. And mm. this San Diego University, so many people, Amma, we know you, we know you. Like that, God has organized this divine program of traveling so much. You have a good secretary. <laughs> <laughs> so I have come and met you. Yes. I believe, I think God will give us an opportunity to work together someday. Amen. Yes. That I think we good. have been working together. Yeah. Yes. But now we're more aware. You see, our body is somewhere, <laughs> but in the spirit we are together. <laughs> All right. Thank you Joanna. for bringing us together, Michael. My, my great pleasure, Joanna. Thank you for coming. I know you have an incredibly busy schedule. Yes. <laughs> and you're about to go on a trip. I think you'll come to in Seattle. I cannot. I'm leaving in a few hours for Tokyo. <laughs> so I, I'm going to run home and finish packing. Mm -hmm. So I'm so glad. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad I get a chance to see you. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you, Fran. Thank you, Joanna. So you Thank you, everyone. We are all together. That's the final message. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. Well, I.